Welcome to the Disconnection Podcast. My name is Kyle Nielsen, and I'll be your host for today's show. On this episode of Disconnection, we're going to be speaking to a cousin of mine, Garrett Smith, uh, who lives, unfortunately, on the other side of the United States, or grew up there, and is currently a dance choreographer in Norway. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, excellent. I what do you know. mean about unfortunately lives on the I mean, it would have been cool if you were like on this side of the country oh, yeah. instead. Uh, like some of my... I'm like, I'm already offended. Moms, <laughs> yeah, fuck, <laughs> fuck, holy shit. Um, like on my mom's side of the family, I have a lot of family over here. But anyway, hold on. So thank you so much for allowing me to interview you before your show yeah. um, later this week. And also, why don't we start there? What, what show do you have going on? So this is the Youth America Grand Prix 2018 Gala. It is the largest American ballet scholarship program in the country. And next year is their 20th anniversary. Wow, very, very cool. And so you are the choreographer for the show, but you're also performing in it, yes? I'm, so I choreographed a piece for dancers from the Bolshoi to be in it. Unfortunately, they did not get their visas accepted. So now I am performing with Whitney Jensen. We are both dancing in Norwegian National Ballet, and we're here doing this, some of my choreography in the show, last minute. Last minute gig. Last minute gig. Does that happen a lot in um, classical ballet? I think it happens with these types of galas, you know. The really big shows. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. Before we start talking about more stuff that's going on, let's jump back to your childhood. Let's jump back. So, tell me about um, growing up in Utah. Tell me about... Yikes. uh, Right? It's a lot. It's a heavy piece. Tell me about growing up in Utah. Tell me about um, being adopted and what that meant for you. Being adopted wasn't a big deal for me because Mm. I was adopted at birth into my family, um, which is... Should I talk about the religion? Yeah, (laughs) they're Mormon. It's okay. I'm born into uh, the Mormon faith and uh, was adopted right at birth. I you know, when I found out, it wasn't a big deal for me. My parents are my parents. Uh, it's a close adoption, so I've never met my birth parents. But, um, yeah, things happen for a reason. I believe this happened for a reason. Um, growing up in Utah, I started with, like, sports and gymnastics, kind of did things my sister did, took a tap class here for, like, three weeks when I was five years old. Um, then I started dancing because I had a bad experience with sports. Uh, I'm, I lost the game for the team and the coach yelled at me and I what, felt... What, what was the sport? Soccer. You you were the cause of the loss? Yeah, I, I kicked it like into the other team's goal. You mean your own team's goal? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how does it work? Um, so then I was like, yeah, maybe I'll try something different. Clearly cool. I don't get it. Right, right. I'm like, I kicked the ball. You're like, isn't that what you do? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So I just started, uh, my mom enrolled me in a class and I, it was like an instant connection. With ballet or was this gymnastics It was first? actually, okay, it was jazz, tap, hip hop. It was like recreational, you know, you just like go to a studio and like take dance classes. Uh, like a, they do dance competitions and cool. slowly but surely my eyes were open to all other types of things happening and realized if I needed to be better, then I should take ballet seriously. And of course, growing up being the only boy who danced where I'm from, um, like growing up in Utah, I mean, how do you explain that? Um, (laughs) Growing up in Utah, everyone's Mormon, of course, but being a boy who dances back in like like 1999, 2000, uh, I got teased, bullied, made fun of all the time. But when I went to dance class, that was like home for me because I was the only boy. I got a lot of attention, to be honest. Um, From girls? Yeah. But just attention uh, in general because I was learning quickly and um, you could say there was like a natural talent. Like a prodigy. No, not like a prodigy. I mean... I mean, also, yes, let's keep you humble. (laughs) Right? You're not. Just good. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I mean, I had success happening quickly for me, so... That was like my driving force. Um, I I was doing well in classes, and that was like my home. 
even though school, I didn't really make friends easy with boys. I made mm. friends easy with girls. I wasn't good at sports, and that's all they, the boys want to do is play basketball at recess. Right, right. I didn't fit in. I didn't want to play football. I just wanted to do, like, hopscotch with the girls and, like, take art classes and choreograph dances. You know, I, I performed at recitals in school or talent shows. But Did then, they have, like, dances? Um, well, like a talent show. You know, people right, have right. Their, show their talent, and I would dance and... That some people would be like, "Wow, like you're really talented. It's so great that you're doing this." And then other people would be like, "You're gay. You're a faggot. Gary the fairy. You know." No way. Yep. But uh, it's like that did not tear me down. It's like because they were doing that, it's like it made me want to push even more to be better and be that much to be like shove it in their face to be like, "Good luck," because I'm gonna do this for my life, and you're gonna have a terrible job when you grow up. So. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's kind of true. No, it's like, it didn't, like, beat me down. It's, I don't know. I just kept, I wanted. It was fuel for the fire. Yeah. But I, not just that. I mean, I wanted to continue moving up and improving. And so, like I said, I realized I needed to take ballet to be a better technical dancer, to have better technique. And so I went to a, a strictly all-ballet school in Utah, Utah Regional Ballet. So when was your first competition? When I was with that, it was called Dance Concepts. In how, Sandy. how old were you? I was 10. I started dancing when I was 9. Okay. Um, competitions were probably the next year. Um, but then maybe two, I was at that studio for three years. Then I went to, I did the Winter Olympics opening ceremonies at like age 12. That was fun. Um, performed on TV. And then went to this place, Utah Regional Ballet, where I started training more seriously. And I, one of my teachers was a dancer with the Dutch National Ballet. She had just come back. And she was kind of doing contemporary ballet choreography. And that's kind of what I started falling in love with. Because I could see that the way I was interested in moving could be sophisticated and refined, mm -hmm. yet still interesting and artistic. And so I was like, that opened a whole new world for me. Because ballet wasn't just like pink tights. It was like athletic and artistic and interesting and a beautiful art form that is you know like this performing art an expression mm -hmm. so what next <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh like i was did you, were you able to take um other classes and learn more for ballet or like are you 12, 13, 14, and you're moving up, and it's just still strictly ballet. Were you able to branch off? Because your original school was um, a mixed dance, correct? They had jazz classes and modern classes, but it was a strictly technique, ballet technique focus. There's mm -hmm. like men's classes, there's a summer program. Um, I went away for the summers to the Kerov in DC and Pacific Northwest Ballet and School of American Ballet in New York. It's where I saw you and your parents, and I did right. that competition, New York City Dance Alliance, and I, um, I would kind of sneak away. We're not allowed to do these competitions, but I would sneak away independently and do them because I wanted to be exposed to what I, I love. I missed jazz. I wanted to keep doing jazz and hip-hop and contemporary and tap, um, but they don't, t they don't teach that at the school. So I would sneak away to these conventions, and I won a national title, um, with my choreography for a solo that I made on myself. And that's kind of where the choreography first started happening for me, was we didn't have money to pay for choreographers, so I just started competing those solos that I would make. And um, I won Junior Outstanding Dancer, went on tour with a convention that whole year, being immersed to dance all over this country. Then I think... I stayed in Utah a little bit more, continued training. Then I did the competition convention again and won a teen title, national title again. Or did you create that piece as well? Actually, I didn't. I, I competed some other pieces by me, um, but there was a choreographer who did it for free, and um, he's the director of Odyssey Dance Theater, and Daryl Yeager. And I won with that piece, that solo. Um, and all these people in these conventions are people you're seeing on So You Think You Can Dance, like Travis Wall. We were both touring together, me, him, Allison Holker, um, Danny Tidwell, all those people who've won on the TV show. I was in their company touring, which was cool. 
they all decided to go do So You Think You Can Dance. I did not um, because I won a scholarship at Youth America Grand Prix, which is the reason I'm here in New York right now. I won. A, I competed as a kid, so I'm alumni for this whole thing. Right. But I won to move to Texas. Um, I was scouted, and they said, we'll give you a scholarship. So I moved there when I was 17, moved away from home, and it was wonderful because I was in a studio. A it studio. was wonderful to not be at home. It was wonderful to get out of Utah. Just because, <laughs> well, first, that Mormon bubble. It's nice to get out of this like this bubble where it's like a cookie cutter lifestyle. I don't have a cookie cutter lifestyle, so it, it was good for me to get out. But not just because of like life, but because now in the studio, it was all men. I had like the competition I needed. In Utah, I was the only boy. But in Houston, it was me and 20 other talented boys, you know, so it was like more competitive. Yada, yada, yada. I got offered an apprenticeship in the company and I was also choreographing on my peers the entire time I was there in the school, in the second company. Um, my piece went to Hungary, Budapest. Um, you know, I, when I was an apprentice, I won the New York Choreographic Institute Fellowship Award from Peter Martins and choreographed on Houston Ballet as an apprentice, which was kind of intimidating being an apprentice, telling soloists, principals, What's the age difference between you and these uh, solos? So I'm like 18. They're probably 26 and up. Whoa, that's a big difference, mm -hmm. especially at that age. Yeah. Did you get a lot of pushback from them? Um, maybe in the beginning. I mean, I'm kind of discovering how I'm even. I want to function and work as a choreographer. So, at I mean, this age. Yeah. I mean, it's intimidating, and maybe they're not. It's not the most collaborative. Uh, I mean, no one wants to be told what to do when it's like this young kid. So, I mean, some of them were wonderful, but I think maybe it wasn't the most amazing ideal experience, but I learned from that, you know. Um, I continued doing pieces and workshops. I danced in the company for two more years, three more years. And then I decided to do some European auditions. My dream was to dance for Netherlands Dance Theater. And so I left and did some auditions and I got offered a job in Norwegian National Ballet. So I told my director I'm leaving, I'm moving. And I got to work with my dream choreographer my first season there, Yuri Killian. He's a Czech choreographer. Um, he is like a master of our generation. He's 70 years old and I mean, Google him. He's like one of the best living choreographers of our time. It was amazing. I got to work with Nacho Duado. I got to work with Alexander Eichmann in a new Swan Lake with water on stage. It was super cool. Um, that year I found out that I'm going to have my first real big commission as a choreographer on Houston Ballet. And my director let me go and do that. Cool. So that was amazing. Because in Norway you have permanent contracts. That's how the social system works there. Hmm. So you establish a contract that is lifetime until age 41. And then you get your pension to retire from. So are you still in that contract with them? I just terminated it because I'm going to be full-time freelance choreographer and move to Spain. I was at the Spanish, em Spanish embassy this morning asking which visa is correct for me to apply for. So that's fast forwarding six years yeah, yeah. from the point that I'm oh, talking about yeah, now. Yeah. Right. Let's let's go back. Let's take it back. <laughs> so you're now 23, 22 um, in, um, in Norway? Yeah. Yep. Uh, my first season was exciting. My second season was hard because I had just come back. So my commission on Houston Ballet. Mm-hmm was in the beginning of the season. So I came in two weeks late into the season in Norway and I was on such a high. When you're a choreographer, you're in the front of the room. It's your direction. You're directing, you're creating. There's a lot of attention that comes with being a choreographer. You know, you get reviews, you get feedback. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like being the actor in a movie um, because they get a lot of attention. Um, the directors don't really get the praise. It's like the actors. It's kind of like the opposite in the dance world. Like the principal dancers, the leads, they get a lot of attention, but I feel like choreographers get a lot of attention. That's not why I do it. I do it because I love it. And I feel like it's what I meant to do. I'm a very creative, artistic, visual drawn person. 
without the without the arts in my life, I don't know like what my life would be would be right. my purpose. I could never just sit in an office and type up emails and you know I like that's just not who I am. I can't just sit down. I have to like be moving and anyway. So what were we talking? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? So uh, your your second season. Um, it was hard. I got a little bit depressed. I'm also starting my life over in Norway right. after having all these friends for six years in Houston and socializing, growing up, becoming an adult in Houston and still growing up in Norway. Um, I decided to, what we're allowed to do is take permission. You can leave and still have your job. That's what's so cool about the permanent contract and the whole system set up in Norway, Scandinavia. I left Norway came back to America, moved back in with my parents. That sucked, wow. But I did it because I needed to save money because mm -hmm. I didn't have work lined up for me. I was, um, I took a year and a half off, that was the agreement. And I had one or two gigs set up. One was at Milwaukee Ballet, it was like a choreographic competition. And then one was creating a piece at Ballet West. And I won first place at this choreographic competition. It's like the first- Which one? Milwaukee. Okay. It's like the first thing I've won as a choreographer. Mm -hmm. It was super cool it, it, to win first place. It felt amazing. Um, and I really was proud of that piece. Um, it was to music by Joseph Haydn and very, very fun. Even though you designed your first teen piece yourself, right? Yeah, I mean, those don't even count. I don't even count those anymore. That was just like me winning a solo, competing. Like, that, there's a lot that's developed since that age as a kid. I would assume now so. it's not it's not the commercial competition so you think you can dance type stuff. It's you're becoming an artist. You're learning how to develop a twenty five minute work on stage that people are paying money to see. Um, along right. with other choreographers who are much older than me. Um, are you on the younger age as yeah. compared to like choreographers around the world? Well, like I'll have, I'll be in an evening with like Balanchine and Jerome Robbins and those are both people who are dead and have created a legacy in starting here in New York. So to like be in an evening with like these two people, it's a, it's kind of intimidating in itself. But um, so anyways, yeah, I created a piece at Ballet West called Facades, which also was kind of a hit. It's a self-reflective ballet in a Baroque style through the Baroque eye. You've got all these beautiful red tutus with black backdrop and a Rococo frame. Um, Cincinnati Ballet bought this ballet for this season and I have my assistant who went and set it on them. Um, so after my permission of being a freelance choreographer, having a taste of what it's like to be an entrepreneur, freelance, self-employed person, it was very fun and I could see that I could make it if this is what I wanted to be a choreographer. So I came back to Norway because I was like, you know, I'm young. I still need to dance and work with other choreographers to help me learn and, and grow and to figure out what I want to say. Um, the more I work with other choreographers, it just helps my own vocabulary, you know? Right. So, um, Things changed though. When I was in Norway the first time, I was like the shiny new toy. I was given everything on a silver platter. First cast this, first cast that. Um, first cast means like you are picked by the choreographer to perform a piece and then opening night, like you are the premier cast. There's other casts in case, you know, like we switch it in and out. Like you'll have like 10 people learn a piece and then another set of 10 people and then there's like an injury replacement cast just in case anyone gets injured. Like on so the bench. You, exactly, like yeah. you wanna be out on the court. Right. First cast is out on the court. Awesome. Like the hands-on people. Right. And that's, you wanna be first cast. So I got first cast a lot. When I got back, I was like the injury cover replacement cast. Oh shit. I wasn't even performing because I wasn't there. I wasn't there when like, the seasons get planned in advance. So like a piece, can, you can audition for a piece that's not even performing until the next year. So I wasn't there because I was on permission. So it sucked because I'm like, the whole point was to come back and dance, but I'm not even dancing. I'm just learning things. And you can still learn a lot just 
I mean, I want to learn, right? So, I mean, I can learn things just by standing in a studio. But it's not the same. But you're it's, not pushing yourself you're as hard. You're not performing it. You know, yeah. you're not hands on with the choreographer, and that was the whole point. So I was just like, I was disappointed, and my director could say I was disappointed because when you're a choreographer, you're on such a high because it's like your vision. And then when you come back to be a dancer, you're a soldier. You're being told what to do. And it sucks to have like a taste of being the boss and then to come back to being not the boss in a way. So after two more seasons of dancing in Norway, I, you know, I got to do some more pieces by Yuri Killian that went on tour and got to dance dream roles. I mean, it was amazing. It was an amazing time. The repertoire in Norway is fantastic. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I decided I'm going to go back on permission again for another three months. Even after knowing that you might not get the yeah. pieces. Yeah, I, because I was like, I, I need to take advantage of opportunities. And then I came back to Norway again. What, what opportunities were you able to take advantage of those, those three months? Those opportunities were Texas Ballet Theater, Ballet West again, um, Salt Contemporary Dance, Odyssey Dance Theater in Utah, um, New York Choreographic Institute here, New York City Ballet, um, something else. Um, and then I went back to Norway. Um, oh, I, I choreographed a piece on a girl for a Youth America Grand Prix. I didn't attend, but she took my solo to perform in the gala. She, she won an award, and I won the Outstanding Choreographer Award. And, and you that, weren't even there. I wasn't even there. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> the the award is that I get to choreograph on the Bolshoi, that's it's like a huge choreographic award, but it fell through because the Bolshoi is kind of bad at planning and organization. The so Bolshoi is the Bolshoi Theater in Moscow. Um, it's like world renowned for. They are the Bolshoi Theater is older than America. They are like historically the very beginning of ballet. You've got Paris Opera where it kind of all started, Bolshoi Ballet. Royal Ballet, I mean, it's like the Bolshoi Ballet is where it's at. How did you so, feel when you heard about it? I mean, it was just like, okay, that's, it's, it doesn't get bigger than that. But I was ready, you know? I'm like, I wasn't intimidated, I was excited. But it fell through. So Larissa, the director of YAGP, f um, has connections with the Mariinsky, and that's in St. Petersburg. So I went to St. Petersburg instead, and I worked with the company there, and I created a piece called Celestial. And it was successful. People heard about the success of the piece. Finally, a year comes around. I'm back in Norway dancing, and I get to do a piece of the Bolshoi for real. I go to the Bolshoi. My piece closes the show. It's either nice to open a show or close a show, mm -hmm. because you're like at the beginning and the end. You can right, like right. The most memorable or wrap times. it up. Yeah, exactly. So my piece closes the show. It's a success. Um, the principal. Olga Smirnova, dancing there, um, wants me to create an, a potida, a duet for her and her partner for something in the future. So I'm kind of already getting like gigs just from being there. And that's amazing because Olga Smirnova is their prima ballerina. So it's um, huge to work with her. So I go back to Norway, continue dancing, and then I leave again. But this me going to the Bolshoi is where it changed everything with my job because my director, she was like, you know, you coming back and forth is difficult. I know you have a permanent contract, but I can see that, you know, you're very happy when you're choreographing and we can't just keep like finding replacements for you when you leave. Um, you kind of need to just make a decision. And so I said, okay, I'm going to be a choreographer, full-time freelance. So I canceled my permanent contract and... Um, went to the Bolshoi to work with them. And as of now, I am a full-time freelance choreographer here in New York with you. Why, what made you take that step to say, okay, this is it? What was it that you felt or that you thought that when you went back to Norway and they said, listen, we can't have you leaving all the time, like we understand, but what was it that almost clicked in your head? Well, of course, I wanted to. I kind of wanted to leave the company and try um, dancing for another company um, to continue working with other choreographers. That's really what I want. But 
I can't keep sacrificing big opportunities like the Bolshoi or things like that that are coming my way because if I expect to be successful as a choreographer, I can't retire at age 40 and then just start, you know, from scratch. To, like, the ball won't get rolling until like age 45. And it's just too late at that point. Pretty much all the big successful choreographers started around when I kind of started taking it serious, like young 20s and leaving dance jobs early because their focus is on their work. And that's really all I want to do at this point. It's I want to create, I want to work with companies, I want to be worldwide creating art and inspiring people and moving people. It's the reason why I do what I do, you know, it's, it's for the audience, it's... Um, You're also a little daring in your moving of people though, yes? I, I know that you were able I'm to... I'm so daring. <laughs> I know that you were able to um, design or uh, have the males wear a tutu at, at the, <laughs> the Volsho? The men? Yeah, I put them all in a tutu. It, we called the piece Reverse. Reverse. And the whole point was, what if men were put in tutus in the beginning? That would be our normal, as we know it. So it's just like thinking differently. Um, I just don't like how people put things in sex in boxes mm -hmm. and label, if you're a man, you can only do this. If you're a woman, you can only do that. So I just switched it, and that's the whole concept behind that piece is, what if it started like that? And then you move from there. Are you trying to push the envelope for your moves too? So your classic ballet, but are you trying yeah, at I'm, all to like I'm take it? like and... experimenting with movement and fusing different styles together and just um, feeling like my body and how I want to move and how I want to um, also see other people move and try to highlight what's great about them and their body. That's kind of like the gift as a choreographer is being able to, I think a good choreographer can see what's in front of them and makes them look good. Regardless of who it is. Yeah, it's not just like my vision because at the end of the day, their bodies are doing it on stage. I'm in the audience. So it should highlight what their abilities are with my concept and vision in mind. What are some of, uh, of the choreography pieces that you're working on right now? So I just did a piece called Imitations. Um, what I have coming up in Norway, I have a commission there. Um, it's going to be an all Baroque evening. So right now I'm working on a lot of the fashion from the Baroque area inspires me. The fashion from that time is art in itself. And it's just going to be a celebration of the music of that time and how humankind is the same no matter what time period. So no matter where it's, whether it's the 17th century or 2018, we all want the same things as human beings. So I'm going to try and show that in a way without being literal. And the movement will really be coming from the music. L let's so. get a little literal. With, um, with that, uh, what do you think all humans want? Love, respect, sex, happiness, companionship. I'd say that was pretty spot on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think that your history, um, living the life that you've lived and wanting to um, having fuel for the fire, right? When you're a kid and not caring what other people said. Do you feel like because of that, you were able to become who you are today? Or do you think it, maybe you got some lucky breaks here or there? I received privileges, maybe being the only boy that danced, getting scholarships here and there. But I would say I am born with a talent and a gift, but without hard work, talent, doesn't come to fruition with anything. Hard work beats talent. Um, so the combination, I, I've worked hard for the things I want. I've made sacrifices in my life. Um, I obsess kind of over Yeah, you do, yeah. I, but that's a good thing, it's your passion. I'm, it's Yeah, I'm obsessed with every day, I'm just like, 
you know, I'm like, ooh, what, what, like, look at what that person's wearing. I'll like take a picture without them knowing, and I'll like send it to <laughs> a designer and be like, what do you think about this? Like, that wouldn't that be so cool on stage? And like, I'm, I'm always thinking in that way. Right. Like this could be a piece right here, me sitting with you, you on the couch, and it's like the interview on stage. <laughs> you never know. That would be an honor if I could be in that piece. <laughs> no, I'd never. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's start stretching. Yeah, seriously. Let's warm up. Okay, <laughs> so, so you worked out with me one time. Uh, yeah, and you're great. You could be a personal trainer. Thank you very much. But you've got also gotten a lot bigger. What has changed? Is that what a fat have... joke? No, it's you. You look like you've gotten <laughs> you. a little bit more ripped. Come on. That's right. So what? What have you taken into consideration for uh, physical training, physical exercise? Because you're you're now mostly choreography, right? You're yeah. not dancing as much yet. You've... I mean, I'm gonna have to hit the cardio more at the gym, but I just wanted to bulk up a little bit in my upper body because my legs are so big that sometimes it looks a little bit imbalanced. I, I've seen pictures and I'm like, I just wish I had a little bit more of a chest and more lats to broaden up a bit. So it's just, uh, it has nothing to really do with like dance. Or, it's just a, a personal thing that I wanted for myself. Does it affect your I'm dance? vain. There it yeah. is. There that, it is. Okay. <laughs> we all are. No. Do you think uh, it has affected your dance moves at all? No. No, not at all. Would you say that... If anything, when I shaved my head, maybe like a year and a half ago, I felt like I needed to bulk up a little bit. Because mm -hmm. my friend Pear in Norway, he, he was, his hair was thinning out as well. He shaved his head. We both did it the same month. Oh, like, he, he was in Norway as in America. We both just decided to shave it. Didn't even tell each other. And we just, like, showed up and we were like, dude! But he, the way he was thinking was the same way I was thinking. He felt like if that's the look he's going to sport, that he kind of needs to bulk up so he didn't look like he had, like, cancer, or that he was, like, sick, you know? He was like, mm -hmm. I don't want to look like I just, like, had, you know, chemo. And I'm, like, this scrawny little, like, skinny ballet dancer. And I was like, same. I need to, I felt like it's an edgier look, and I needed to bulk up to have that kind of, I don't know, masculinity. So maybe that sounds stupid. Maybe that's, I don't know. Masculinity might be something more societal, um, cultural, but I understand where you're coming from. It's a particular look that you're going for. Yeah. It's understandable. I, th part of the reason why I work out, too, is, like, I want to have a particular look. I enjoy looking like a guy, being a guy. Um, I get jealous when I go to the beach in the summer and I'm like, all these people are just like buff and ripped. And it's like, <laughs> because you're a ballet dancer, you just, it's just like, we're all so skinny. And yeah, but your legs are literally we're jacked. We're toned and athletic. And your fit. legs are jacked. That's right. They are. There it is. He's doing a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> no one can see what I'm doing. Nobody now. can That's see what I'm just going to it's all right. It. So we just had dinner before this, but you had said to me, well, I guess breakfast because people listen to this in the morning, whatever. You had said that you don't want to eat, uh, you don't want to get sweets. Because I said I could do without sugar because I eat enough sugar already. I really need to stop uh, eating as much as I do. But you said that having uh, like a gelato might not be the smartest move if your shirt is going to be off later. Yeah, for like a I'm going to be shirtless days. in this piece. Um, Do you take that in cons into consideration even if you weren't shirtless? More so that I'm shirtless. Um, skin looks really good on stage in lights, but um, I haven't been taking class consistently, which is a lot of cardio. So I've noticed just a little bit of like fat around my belly button that isn't always there and no one like no one cares. It's just like you notice it more on yourself than anybody. So uh yeah, if I'm performing shirtless, I want to look good. So I'm like maybe I shouldn't be eating gelato and crap before a show. <laughs> like I need to eat salad, just salad tomorrow. And then throw up and then go <laughs> throw up and repeat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Completely. How, um... He is kidding. How intricate are you with your nutrition in general? I usually eat whatever I want, but I'm like 29 now, and I have kind of cut back on the sweets. Um, 
I don't really crave sugar as much, but even if I do, I'm just trying to... What about carbs? Carbs are... I mean, I'll eat a carb any day. Like, are you aiming for I eat your, pasta, but... Are you I'm, aiming for mostly protein foods, or are you just eating whatever's in front of you, discounting um, sugar? Protein, but also produce, and I'm trying to incorporate more vegetables and fruit in my life. I, I do want to be a bit better with... I, I think about what I eat now. Um, now? Like, mentally, I'm prepared. Like, I'll... You know, Recently, or...? Over the past year. Okay. Is that outside of anything, or is it just, like, as you... Age. Just like a personal health, yeah, something that you're taking into consideration more. Yeah. I think I, it was just because I noticed that this area <laughs> around my my six pack it kind of become a li- became a little bit less than what it was. You know, like my body fat used to be like six, and I think the percentage is now maybe eleven. And so, if I'm gonna stop dancing and be choreographing. I'm not going to get the cardio that I'm getting. So if I don't change something, I, over time, I know it will get worse. My definition will go away. And I don't want to lose that. I don't want to become like the fat choreographer. Like, I, I refuse. So, Do you have I a do. different perception of a fat choreographer as compared to a skinny one? I mean, you'll see dancers who are choreographers who just become choreographers and they let themselves go because they just are so busy and they don't have time to take care of themselves. But I am going to take care of myself. I'm going to eat well and make sure I am happy with my how I look. Because if I'm not happy with how I look, I am not feeling confident. So and that's an important thing when you're on stage. Not on stage. I think just in general, like as a human being, like I want to feel happy with how I look. Especially when my whole career, my whole life, I've looked a certain way. I don't want that to suddenly change just because I'm not dancing and burning, um, burning calories Fat and calories. calories i'm like what is <laughs> <laughs> lord help me <clears throat> what would be something that you would want to tell someone who's thinking about getting into ballet but i don't want you to be like just try hard and like work i want, like what are some honest tips that you wish someone told you well i feel like you start it because you have an interest in it right right um work hard like results pay off from hard work take advantage of opportunities don't get stuck staying in one place if you want to go somewhere else go go try a summer program there go audition like go educate yourself and see what's out there go for your dreams don't just like expect like you have to make it happen you have to make the effort and do it mm. and it, 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 there can be th- moments where it's scary but you like you have to believe in yourself and have faith in yourself um and know that your hard work is going to pay off yeah i mean if you have a talent and an interest in something and you know that um i mean if someone has an interest in being a dancer and they are you know, there's a talent there and there's hard work and there you know there's a success that comes with that after a while um mm-hmm. you know like what you just have to ask yourself like what do you want what do you want from this do you want to be a professional dancer in a big company can't be afraid to take that leap though literally and figuratively how go dare for you? it what <laughs> how dare i <clears throat> you're punny mm, so i've been told well, I want to thank you for taking the time to let me interview you on your busy schedule. So busy. So busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if anyone wanted to reach out to you and ask you for advice on ballet or dance in general, where would they be able to reach you at? Well, you can follow me on uh, Instagram. I'm posting yeah, yeah, things give, all give, the time. Give that all I'm of doing. your plugs. So um, on Instagram, it's at Garrett Smith Choreography. On YouTube, it's the same, Garrett Smith Choreography. Facebook, Garrett Smith Choreography. Um, Yeah, and you can also message me on all of those, on my videos, even the fun ones. Wink, wink, just kidding. (laughs) All my videos are there. (laughs) Do you want me to take that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Take that part out. No. No? No. Okay. (laughs) Then I won't. Okay. Nailed it.
Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast again. And to everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode on the Disconnection Podcast, uh, where we aim to inform, inspire, and close the disconnections in your life. You can check us out on iTunes, YouTube, the podcast app on your iPhone, Spotify, on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram, dis-connection.com. And give us a like, rate, review. We'll catch you on the next episode of Disconnection.